Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So today's upload is going to be about the potential for, uh, or the likelihood of a major pattern change that will be occurring after a potential, uh, at this point, likely storm system, uh, snowstorm. This snowstorm will be very powerful bringing several inches of snow, if not more, uh, you know, up to a foot, foot and a half, across Iowa, uh, Illinois, Wisconsin, Missouri, among those areas, and into Michigan, so, you know, uh, potentially a very, very potent system, a uh, very powerful system, so that's what we will be talking about, and the, just the pattern change behind it, because it'll thing, leave things leave things very chilly so uh if you like these type of videos i do if you like this channel but you haven't subscribed yet for some obscure reason please consider subscribing <clears throat> it really really <clears throat> means a lot uh, so consider doing that and i would really appreciate it so thank you for that also leaving a like and commenting on a video also never hurts so we're looking at the gfs global forecasting system right now and let's take this one by one so this is just the newest model data you can see 18 z um so it literally just came in uh, as as of uh five o'clock and again i'm recording this video at, i think yeah 5 10 so uh, this will this video uh, 518 sorry uh, and this video will be uploaded very very soon so I'm basically analyzing the latest model data and <clears throat> let's get into this so you can see there's gonna be a first little system first little clipper kind of uh, very very fast it's gonna be zooming through the uh, through this uh, the, the I guess like the eastern eastern side of this trough and you can see that the winds would be very powerful up aloft And that's why this thing just zooms past bringing a little bit of snow not nothing too heavy up to five inches though in some locations So that is definitely uh, uh, You know that is definitely uh, still a concern you can see though the bigger storm really forms uh, on Thursday and this thing is pretty big lots of rain to the south possibly some severe thunderstorms um, into Alabama, uh, Tennessee, uh, and into Mississippi, <clears throat> Georgia as well. And look at this. Uh, this system really starts wrapping itself. And I apologize, I'm going a little bit quickly. But let's just go through this first second one. So it really starts organizing itself out of uh, the Rockies once it gets out of the Rockies. And you can see this is Wednesday or late Tuesday, late tomorrow. Snow widespread across Colorado into Kansas. Okay, then the storm starts fetching up moisture from the Gulf of Mexico. That brings in a lot of those green colors. That is some heavy, pretty heavy rain from the Gulf of Mexico uh, using the moisture from the Gulf of Mexico. Notice where the cold air is. We have this giant trough right here. It has plenty of snow and areas like Kansas, Nebraska, uh, Missouri, and northern Texas will be seeing some snow. This quickly escalates uh, into the U.S. or sorry, into the Midwest. And notice how <clears throat> there's a deformation bend that starts forming. So basically, that what that is is a very, a very uh, area of very strong lift, and that. Apologies about that. And that uh, really could rank up or, you know, really increase the snowfall uh, rates very, very quickly. I mean, notice how it's light to moderate snow across Missouri and into Iowa and Kansas and Illinois and southern Wisconsin. However, this is light snow. <clears throat> so once we get into uh, the, the heavier stuff, notice right there. Or once we go more into time, notice how it gets those darker colors. We get some shades of up to four, uh, you know, three, four inches of snow per hour. Some, you know, some bands, some clusters. That's why it could, you know, even despite it being warm, I got a comment like that. It was like saying, someone was saying that it's very warm across northern Illinois. And, you know, it won't accumulate or it may, we may have troubles. Well, you know, I, that normally would be the case, like with this, this, this first system. You know, a, a lot of it will be limited because of that those warm temperatures. But some of these rates will be able to overcome that and um, <clears throat> produce most, uh, you know, produce some substantial accumulations despite it being uh, basically Halloween. And notice how it moves up to the north by the time it's like the weekend, uh, into Friday and Saturday, <clears throat> and leave some snow for Michigan as well. Notice uh, this is some. Um, these are some pretty substantial amounts. <clears throat> uh, you can see 13, 7, 5 inches in the hot spot right there, possibly up to a foot and a half, maybe closer to 18 inches. But definitely this, you know, uh, will get maybe possibly limited <clears throat> by some of that. Uh, by some of the, the those warm temperatures, uh, this is uh, accumulated positive snow depth. Is a little different view of it. Uh, what well, like uh, this is supposed to be taking in the GFS's uh, uh, snow or like the 
thermal temperature profile and that's basically supposed to uh, look at the temperatures and show the snow ratios correct snow ratios and you can see quite a bit of snow actually uh, for an early season snowstorm so that's very interesting I remember how originally it was uh, across uh, parts of minnesota uh this snowstorm last week at around this time frame and across north dakota now it's way down here so and things change pretty quickly when it comes to the weather but again those those snowfall amounts still have made, stayed very big notice how if we go to the thermodynamics <clears throat> and the temperatures i mean they just take a plummet i mean they already have taken a plummet across many locations after the weekend snow or after the weekend system the one that dumped uh, just tons and tons of rain on saturday uh, across or over on saturday and sunday across the midwest and uh, it was originating in the south throughout you know the, the friday and thursday portions of last week but notice how <clears throat> it really uh, cools things off and the cool air kind of gets stuck a little bit because this uh, this this uh, system tries bringing up some warm air and it really tights, tightens up this uh, this uh, barrel clinic zone and notice how it's very warm to the east and south of this system but uh, to the northwest i mean very chilly temperatures which allow for that uh, snow to accumulate look at that some of those anomalies reaching 10 to 15 to 20 degrees below average in celsius so that would mean even more across uh, across the in fahrenheit and then notice look at that cold front powerful cold front zooming through the country bringing much colder uh, temperatures across uh, a good portion of the country <clears throat> especially into the east then we may see the pattern relax a little bit, but if we look at the other <clears throat> model of the GFS, we notice how uh, we get reinforcing shots, one right there, and we generally stay in this pattern where the southwest may stay warmer, or while the eastern U.S. stays a little bit, or, uh, while the eastern U.S. stays cooler. However, again, this one's hinting a little bit of a breakage of that pattern, so that would be interesting to see what exactly happens. And if we go to the ensembles, and let me show you some of these you know two meter temperature anomalies you can see are uh, i want to go through this basically this is like 20 or 30 models combined just to form uh, a similar scenario what the gfs is showing but with more <clears throat> averaged out means and not so extreme but still you know this is averaged out but they're still showing uh some very very drastic temperature anomalies and again uh warm to the east of the storm and uh cold to the northwest of the storm with uh with that pile which will allow for that snow and you can see it occurs the the cold uh, pattern occurs and it stays around for a while and you can see maybe starting letting up uh, across the later portions uh around mid-november maybe letting up uh, in some of in some aspects so that would be interesting if you look at a six to ten day outlook uh, for the um, CP CPC Climate Prediction Center, you can see they are they're stating below average conditions for a good portion of the country, if not, you know, the majority, like 85% um, of the country, south, southwest and peninsula of Florida staying above average. If you go to the 8 to 14 day outlook in November 5th through the 11th, so before like that possible warm up, you can see it's, the cold air has backed off and a little bit possible uh, warmer air across uh, the southwest and Florida. So we'll see what that, you know, uh, if that occurs. Uh, you know uh, how long this cold air stays it may stay a little bit longer it may stay a little bit shoulder sh shorter but uh it doesn't seem to last forever i think there will be like a, a warm up in november where, where it would lead to <clears throat> you know some some warmer conditions some very very pleasant uh, you know temperatures because what you've been seeing so far has been pretty chilly and october turned out rather chilly across most of the country so that is you know that that's interesting how um, at the beginning remember when i was saying october may turn out chilly if it you know there were some circumstances that I pointed out and you know i was predicting a chillier october or i you know there were some indications of being possibly warmer <clears throat> but again i took the cold yeah, i took the bet and went with the colder scenario and that's what it seemed uh, to come out it was warm at the beginning but now it's you know the, the ending the later part is very cold so let's look at some of the two meter temperature anomalies let's go back to the gfs global forecasting system let's look at the two meter temperature shaded <clears throat> and look, let's look at some of these temperature uh, you know some of these temperatures the actual temperatures that are measured at two meters and i apologize i've been uh, it's been a rough day, so I am a little bit drained of energy, and uh, you know I'm just overall I'm I'm feeling a little bit you know tired. There's there's a lot of stuff with the college and stuff, so uh, there's a lot of things going on. So I do apologize if I sound a little bit worse or my Tourette's uh, is 
is a little bit getting in the way. But nevertheless, you can see uh, the temperatures will be fairly chilly. I mean, you're getting into the upper teens across the Midwest and very cold across the mountains. But notice again, I want to point out how it's going to be very, very warm across the East Coast with this system. And you can see 70s and 60s getting as far north as Maine, which I've already seen the first snowfall in, in some locations, in many locations up there. So that's interesting how it will get really warmer. But then notice how uh, the, the GFS model <laughs> shows a little bit chillier temperatures right there, if you could see that. I'm going to zoom in for a little bit here. This will, or, you know, this is kind of representing of that snowpack that the storm laid down, or this the Halloween one, and you can see over time it kind of dissipates, but still there, and it's kind of a stark reminder that, you know, the snow really cools things off wherever it falls, you know, even if it's not a lot, or enough to cover the grass, enough to make things white, it will reflect most of the sunlight, or, and that thing will not warm things up at all, and that thing, that's, you know, that warmth will just get sent right back into the atmosphere. So thank you guys so much for watching, consider liking the video, consider subscribing to the channel. I'll catch you all guys in the next episode. See ya, bye.